Hi again. Um, I, just, I just wonder how, how worried are you about being a bit, I think the phrase is sometimes undercooked. You have not had that look the time that you needed to work with the players going to, is this a worry? Is this going to be a, a general worry you think for a lot of the coaches coming into this season? Uh, what, do you mean, what is different to other season? Just because of the, the time, it's obviously an earlier start to this season. Um, it's obviously a very strange season for many different reasons. I said, I said already, we have to extend our preseason into the season. But I think most of the team will do. Most of the teams have to do that. So um, we will now not have a normal preseason week between uh, City and Fulham, but we will do more than we would do in a normal week during a season like in week five or six, usually when we are still not playing Champions League and we have um, uh, usually then a normal a normal week for Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, whatever. And um, But uh, we are actually used to that. And we can, if you, I have no time today, to be honest, to, to talk, to go that deep into it. But um, it's, it's about you and I said like, plenty of times. If you ask me that question and I, I'm the, the I look like the, the only owner, or lonely Mona in the corner and then always talks about player, what the players have to do and all these kind of things, that the international players don't have enough breaks. I think we all agree. But the only one who's talking about it, I'm not sure the only one, I don't read newspaper, but not enough people obviously so far talk about it. So yes, preseason is generally too short, but that's why we extend it into the season. That doesn't help um, for, for, the, for the first games, but it helps for the long term, and that's actually the idea. If you just collect Frank's one thing, did you just say earlier that you're actually having a friendly the day after Fulham as well? Because that would be I just want to click that. I mean, that's quite unprecedented, really, um, that you have to do that a friendly after the season's already started. That we, should... last, we did that last year as oh, well. Right. Okay, sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who was that against anyway? On that one? I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that it will be oh. behind closed doors. Uh, not yet. Okay. Right, so it's fine. Thank you. Welcome. Chris McKenna. Jürgen, are you expecting Manchester City to be any to play in a different style now? They brought in somebody like Haaland who's given them that more centre focus. And will this game, I suppose, give you an insight into what that will be like? Ahead of the league meeting, you'll have this. We, we watched we watched the the Bayern game obviously, and um, it was not too different, but it was good. <laughs> um, and Erling scored a Man City goal, like um, a square ball in a five yard box, a six yard box, sorry. Um, and the, yeah, that's so far as it didn't change a lot. I have the same problem as we have. Um, and you cannot really. They are not used to Erling's natural runs, like we are not used to Darwin's natural runs yet. Um, we, when, when Darwin offers a run, we give him the ball all the time, which is a, <laughs> it's not helpful because um, he's of, often a job for a guy who stretched the, the formation of the opponent is there to, to create space between the lines, these kind of things. So I'm pretty sure we'll need a little bit of time for, for Erling as well, but that doesn't mean he cannot score already early, but how he did it in the last game against Bayern. Um, but most of the things looked like last year. Um, how they set up their press, how they how flexible they are in their own um, possession. It's no, it, it was good, very, very good, but so far no real change. Changes obvious. Ian Radiman. Hi Jurgen. Um Hi. when um you, you lose a title by such a narrow margin and then the opponent who, who have beat you to the title spend money on big players like Haaland and, and Phillips and maybe even the left-back from Brighton, we're not sure yet, having already spent £100 million last summer on Grealish. How do you, as a coach, res respond to that? I know that you've, you've kind of tinkered with your own squad, but how do you respond? What is your answer? Is it... Is it just to get even more out of the players that that you have? Is it possible to get more out of those players? First of all, we spend money as well. Shouldn't forget yeah, that. Sure, no, sure, exactly. Sure. So no, but the plan is always we had now we, we lost three so far. I think three first team players, right? Don't want to forget anybody, but so far um, it was Sadio, Divock, and Taki. Very important players for us. Brought in three. Um, 
want to create space as well for our for the boys for our young boys from last year to to to, to step in in the void wherever it is um there was still um usable for us and um or useful for us and um we are we are together for a while so um we know each other we we know what we have we expect from each other and um we, we had this we had a big meeting when i told the boys what i expect from them next year and stuff like this and i really want to use the, the, the togetherness we have, the, the atmosphere we have in the team. I want to, the experience, I want to use the experiences, experience we made um, for for better. So that that's how it is. And we can grow closer together. We can uh, be clearer in the stuff we do. We are, um, the, the things we do were good. Can we do it better? Yes. Will that always lead to a better result? That's not possible because we won a lot of games, but um, performance-wise, we can definitely improve, and that's what we will try. And then we need to create, again, a resilience um, and, a, and a fighting spirit. And actually, being angry as well is important as well to, to, to fight against the outside world, if you want, in the specific moments. All these things um, we can do. We don't know where that will, us lead, where that will lead us to, but... Um, we know that it will improve us and based on the things um, we know they are good when we bring them on the pitch. Um, and that's that's very important that, that we really are, again, first and foremost, this team nobody wants to play against because when they have the ball, they need to feel pressure everywhere. And when we have the ball, but we have to do that more consistent even. And when we have the ball, we have to be, we have to create new ways. Uh, we have to help the boys with positioning and stuff like this. We can not invent ourselves new that's not necessary but include things here and there and that's what we were really working on and that was why i was so happy about the last half an hour last night um because the last half an hour was a real whirlwind uh, whirlwind it was really it was really good we put him under pressure we didn't score i know that uh, but the way we created against a then deep defending side was really special and um, i was really happy with that some some of the the quality of and the, the consistency of results of Liverpool and Manchester City has become so normal that we now take it for granted. But when you look at it on paper, it's it's just ridiculous the fact that the two of you just don't really lose football matches, really. And it's almost perfect. And yet when that perfect doesn't win you the title, that must kind of I don't know, does that just not kind of fry your brain a little bit? No. That's sport. It's not important if you lose a game. And it's, it's like we lost games like this, where both teams play an incredible high level, and then there's one, oh sorry, there's one thing that makes the difference. One one goal, like the Champions League final, for example, is one goal. That's 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 part of of the deal, and that can happen as well at the end of the season uh, with a, with a points tally. So um, no, that does make me didn't understand one or don't know the the, the 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 phrase you used, but that that didn't turn me crazy or whatever. And not neither the players. Um, because it's it's part of the deal, and uh, we, if there's anything what we can do with it, then we can use it to to get even more more determined. And um, yeah, let's see, let's see. There's no guarantee for any kind of further results. And we will not win one football game this season because we won it last year. Not at all. It makes it even more difficult because everybody wants to 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 knock uh, to hurt us, to win against us, to get a point against us. But it's completely normal. So it will be really tough. But we will give it a try anyway. Last one quickly for Ian Doyle. Yeah, just a question on two other injured players, uh, Queeman Kelleher and Alex Oxley chamberlain I mean, how serious are they? Because it's been a while since we've had any update on them. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we've had oh, something at the... Felt something after the, the, the international game, and but everybody told him, medical department's there, told him it's fine, we'll be good after holiday. He came back, first training... Um, felt it again. <laughs> we checked it and it was not good. So um, I think we will be another two, three weeks um, and it should be fine. And um, with Oxley, yeah, it will take longer. It's a, it's a, it's a serious hamstring injury um, and it will take longer. So, but it's a hamstring and um, we all hate this word. We hate the injury, but it anyway happens from time to time. And now, it, and now Ox was the one.